Hi, you guys. Hello. Happy Friday. Hello, everybody. It's really good to see you. I think we are officially into, into spring, spring spring now. And uh, and I know you're probably looking at me thinking, what's different about it? Well, you're <laughs> right. I did get brand new glasses. And uh, I'm kind of shocked if you didn't notice that, but they are completely identical to the pair I had before, except for this good thing, which is my prescription. Uh, every year it gets, my eyes are getting better. That's, that's the good news. So that's most of you that have uh, are, that struggle that have nearsightedness, you know that's part of your condition. That's one thing that's good that comes with aging, mm. is that your eyes get better. Um, cool. So, yeah. So. Well, mine are getting worse. I guess we balance out. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. There so, we are. Hope you like them. There we are. It's good to see you guys. Yes. Now. So. So and it is Palm Sunday weekend. Yes. Yes. And. One thing that's kind of cool about that, I, was talking, I saw Pastor Steve Asmuth this week, and you, as you know, he has his, uh, every weekend, he and Luann uh, do the worship set from their home, and it's, you can join them around the piano if you like and sing along, or you can just enjoy it in the background, however you like to do that. But they always pick a theme, as you know, and so this week, you will be looking at songs about Palm Sunday, mm -hmm. and, uh, and then the next week, guess what? Easter. So are there some of you that there's certain songs that if it's not, if they're not sung on Easter, then it's not really, it's not Easter. It's not Easter. Well, mm -hmm. you're going to be singing those songs. So cool. you think about rising up from the grave or Christ up the Lord. From the grave he arose. Beautiful. Uh, Christ the Lord has risen today. Hallelujah. So, so anyway, those are going to be, th that's coming up. But if you haven't had a chance to check into those yet, they're on our Facebook page. We post them usually over the weekend. And uh, and you'll enjoy those. They're just a sheer, sheer joy. And they are coming up on their full one year of producing oh, wow. those every week wow. faithfully. Uh, every week they've been posting those. And they have an audience outside of our church who uh, likes to tune in. So they get several hundred hits on those because there's a lot of people that really enjoy That's those. It's cool. been a real blessing over the shutdown. So I uh, hope you have a chance. That's on our Facebook page, uh, the one that you might be watching this all right now on, or if you're not, just go to Facebook and put in City View 55 and uh, you'll find it. So. Woo -hoo. Yep. so, and this Saturday, the 27th, tomorrow, uh, we, City View, is having a huge, well, good size, huge for COVID, mm -hmm. uh, community mm -hmm. outreach uh, for the Palm Sunday weekend. It's going to be at the church um, on Saturday, March 27th. Pastor Georgia had a great turnout for signups, so thank you to all thank of you, you who yeah. maybe got involved with that. Just so, so great. So be praying for that. Be praying for the many, many people. Typically, we have uh, thousands, hundreds and close to thousand maybe people. Maybe over a thousand. Um, at, in a normal year, so yeah. we'll see. People It'll be are, less. We were expecting fewer this year, but, uh, but it'll still be a nice crowd. Yeah. So be praying for that event, and for those of you who are who are going to be there helping out with the petting zoo or registration or whatever it may be, thank you for doing that. We really appreciate that. And as always, we're employing all the social distancing measures mm -hmm. that are that are needed for Masking. something like that. So be expecting that as well. Let's see. Oh, you know what? It's a lot of people. Our, our missions conference every year is such a delight, and this year it was really nice. We had some great guest speakers. And as you know, every year at City View, whether you're part of City View or not, uh, it's time we, we, we pass out the Faith Promise Card, something that's done in every Sunday's got Church across America and something that we have been uh, kind of just made it really special uh, for our fellowship. And so and our people have really been so faithful over the years. The, the, the word is in that uh, missions giving over 2020 was in the black. And so we hit the mark and surpassed it and uh, did so well. And we're just, we thank the Lord and we thank you for your giving there. Well, part of that, a big part of that is the faith promise card, which as you know, you ask the Lord, Lord, what would you have me commit to giving in missions over the course of this year? And then we just turn that in. We don't follow up on it. We don't, we don't connect with you about that. We just, it's just your opportunity to really put that before the Lord. And then something that you can kind of, as a, as a reminder, uh, of your own commitment to bringing the gospel to people around the world. Of course, this has been an extremely tough year for missionaries, as you well know. If you, if you, if you think if you, if you think that things are bad here, most cases across uh, across, I can't think of a of a nation that really has it better off than uh, what we have in terms of what I've heard from our missionaries, mm -hmm. because their governments or their infrastructure or their health systems 
are not that great. All that, all that to say is it's been a tough year for our missionaries. You guys have stepped up to the call and helped them out a lot. And going forward, we want to continue to do that. So all that to say is you can do, if you didn't get a chance to come to the church to do your faith promise card, you can do it this year online. So all you need to do, once again, go to our, our City View 55 Facebook page, and there's a link for that. And you can just fill out that simple card. You put your name, how much you want to, to commit over 2021 for that. And and basically, that's almost all you need to put in. And uh, and then you're good to go. So uh, except for whatever reminders you want to put for yourself in terms of keeping that giving going. So just want to let you know about that. Hope hope you uh, take advantage of that. That's very cool. Excuse me. Um, so today we're going to continue learning about how we can live in abundance while staying in, in lockdown or in COVID, COVID place. Um, we're looking at Paul's letter to the Ephesians and really sensing and, and getting a taste of God's grace and how he sustains us. Mm-hmm. What were you going to say? Oh, and as always, we want to conclude with a time of prayer. And as always, uh, focusing that on Second Chronicles uh, seven fourteen, and we'll be praying together. And I hope you'll be able to join us. Okay, so today we're going to be in Ephesians chapter four, verses fourteen through sixteen. And uh, just to provide some context from last week, and this is paraphrased. Uh, last week we looked at the organizational uh, elements of the church and the purpose of the church that Christ set up. And here is what Paul had to remind us of. Christ himself gave the positions, like pastors and teachers, to equip his people for works of service so that the body of Christ may be built up until we all reach unity in faith. And so that's what we looked at last week, the idea that Christ established various roles and and, um, jobs, if you will, giftings in the church. And the whole purpose of that is that we can grow together in Christ and become strong and mature. So in verse 14 today, Paul goes on to, to add to that. So leaving off with that we may be built up until we all reach unity in the faith. Then, then after that happens, we will no longer be infants tossed back and forth by the waves and blown here and there by every wind of teaching and by the cunning and craftiness of people in their deceitful scheming. And I I really, you know, we've all been there. We've all been in a situation where we feel like we're being tossed back and forth because, because we hear different opinions, we get different, you know, if we have a medical diagnosis and we're getting different different thoughts from different practitioners or or sometimes our emotions, mine anyway, start rolling around in my brain and, and it's like, oh, back and forth. What should I do? What should I listen to? Who should I listen to? And Paul is just really clear that we need to be equipped people, equipped people so that we can be built up, so we can be built up in Christ. And the way that we are equipped is by developing a really rock solid, rock solid foundation in the word of God. To know the word of God, to know the principles of the word of God, to understand what Christ is teaching, what God is saying, what the word of God is telling us as fallen people, to very to very much have a very, very strong foundation in that. And, and that is going to provide an anchor for us. And we won't be tossed back and forth. We will be anchored. We will have that foundation. I could mix up a bunch of other metaphors too. But the whole purpose of that, the whole purpose of being grounded in the word of God, for maturing in Christ, and for developing that unity in our faith is so that we are not tossed to and, to and fro. So we can stand firm we can stay focused. Our mind isn't being led astray by different teachings. Um, and it talks about, Paul talks about the wind of different teachings and the cunning, cunning people who want to whisper into our ears and draw us away. And there's so many voices out there that want to draw us away from our faith in Christ, who question because they just really don't understand what we have. And they want to undermine us. And so my encouragement to you 
is to be in the word of God. Do not forsake your reading of the word, your praying of the word, your ingesting of the word of God and really thinking about it. No matter how long you've been reading it, there's always something new to find. So I encourage you to do that so you can grow in your maturity and not be a little infant who's just being rocked back and forth. Okay, so keep going on that. That's good. And I think one way that we do that, Paul continues in this verse here. He says, how do we, if we want to be committed to the truth and to learning the truth and to not being tossed about by the waves, which, of course, in these days, uh, you know, we have these things called fact check checkers and the truth of uh, the media always being very questionable now in the way they report things. Uh, we live in a culture that the truth is not doesn't seem to be really elevated. People seem to be happy to go along with their feelings rather than the truth. And um, But this is what Paul says. He said, speaking the truth in love. So he mixes both the truth mm -hmm. and the uh, the objective facts of, the, of, this, of whatever we're talking about with love. And mm -hmm. so the emotion and the the facts go together in the situation. Um, have you ever heard, because you can kind of see one without the other. For example, you can see Truth without love. You know, have you ever heard some people say, you know what, I hate to say this to you, but I just want to say this, and I'm just getting real here. I'm just getting real. Have you ever heard that? And so getting real seems to be an excuse for saying just about whatever you want without any sense of being concerned about whether you even receive it or not, let alone understand it. And uh, so that leads to a very combative situation, doesn't it? Certainly it doesn't promote understanding. Then there would be um, work speaking in love, but without any set concern for truth. In other words, we sometimes call that, I'm only concerned about the narrative. You know, Whether the things that I'm saying are true, it doesn't really matter so much. That's not the important thing. I wanna, I wanna get my message here across. So I want you to understand my feelings and my heart for the situation. And sometimes we get behind a cause based on little more than that kind of emotion. Well, it needs to be both, doesn't it? It needs to be truth and love together in order to move forward, whether it's understanding a person, whether it's, a, it's a, a cause that we want to get behind. And certainly it has a lot to do with how we interact with one another in the church mm -hmm. and who the church is to be. Mm -hmm. And so sometimes it's called for to speak that truth. Yes, but only do it in love. And sometimes if you're thinking, I can't say this in a loving way, there you have your goal. You get, wait until you can find a way to communicate that and, and without uh, letting the person and only letting the person know that you say it in the spirit of love. And of course, that's to the goal there is to become a mature body. And I trust that this is a time when we are growing in that area as well. I think I think in many respects, I think this, this year on the pause button has given us the opportunity for a little introspection and a little opportunity to grow in those areas as well. So we have a chance, I think, as we start coming back together, to grow in the sense of being a mature body. And I think the last thing I would say about that is that's what the world is attracted to. They're not attracted to a church that only seems to be interested in peripheral causes and things that are of no great importance to the gospel. Uh, people need the gospel. They need God. They need to understand that he's real, loves them. And all these other things that we sometimes find ourselves getting uh, wrapped up in conversations are really peripheral and really un really un helpful because they, if they are not really found in the word, then we find that they turn people away from the church rather than draw them to the church. And then this uh, last verse that, that Paul mentions here, it says, from him, Christ, the whole body joined and held together by every supporting ligament grows and builds itself up in love as each part mm -hmm. does its work. Well, when we talk about the body, don't we often think of, well, this person's a hand and this person's a head. And this person may be the eyes, another the mouthpiece, and another person the feet. Um, that's kind of how we sometimes think of, when we think of the body. We don't think of the things that connect all those things together. To the First Testament uh, thinker, the body was all connected together by these ligaments. Uh, those were the things that really made it happen. And so the head and the hand need, if I say something, if I want my hand to wave, I have to tell it to do so, and it's the ligaments somehow connecting those apparatus, those endpoints together that make me able to do this. So it's those things that communicate throughout the body of Christ, the things that we need to, need to do to operate in a healthy way, to get our mission done, to achieve those, those things, uh, whether they're outreaches, whether they're teaching, whether they're church services or 
or uh, music ministries, whatever they may be, there needs to be that sense that all the ligaments are, are cooperating in making that happen. So it's not just that each one's functioning properly, but the ligaments that connect them all need to be yeah. functioning well yeah. as well. And that's how the body gets build, built up. See anybody at a gym? They're dependent on those ligaments to make muscles work. Muscles require that kind of tension uh, in order to operate properly. And so that's how um, the body grows and builds itself up in love as each part does mm -hmm. its work. So what is your part? What is your function? Mm -hmm. Are you are you reevaluating it or picking up additional functions? Are you uh, are you simply have you been kind of needed to hold back a little bit and kind of ready to get going and going again? Uh, this is the time when we really think about not only that, but the ligaments that that uh, connect us together, mm -hmm. draw us together, building ourselves up in love. Mm -hmm. That so, so we want to pray for you guys, and um, and um, you know sometimes we every point we think, well, what's what's kind of the latest? And it does seem like even though there's uh, a lot of improvement, a lot of things are opening up. Uh, two things come to my mind is we need to proceed with caution. And I, I do believe that uh, there's good word in that. And uh, but uh, but I do believe that there is also room for expanding a little bit as well. So however you perceive that to be right for your situation, I want to encourage you to in, in that. Um, the other thing is there's still that sense of this wearing on. And you pointed out since that uh, there's a, well, maybe it was Sandy Grove that pointed out the whole idea of of, uh, of COVID syndrome, which is something that. We've been we've been living this way for about a year, so it might not go away as soon as the door is open, you know, uh, and uh, we're able to shake hands again. It, it's something that might uh, the sort of the, the habits we the gained. habits we've gained, the, the way of thinking that we've gained, uh, the way that we even think about other people is is all kind of kind of embedded in us now. So if you can think of that as a syndrome, that's going to take some time to to wear off to readjust. Yeah, and. I shouldn't just say wear off. I think sometimes we need to be aware of it and, and uh, go out of our way to make things happen that need to happen. So, so, so we want to pray for you guys, and uh, we want to pray for you and your household, and also pray for our nation. So, okay. so Lord, we just ask today. First off, I pray for each person gathered here and for the household that they represent. Father, I pray that you would be with them as they continue to to uh, take this path through through this pandemic and make those choices that are that are life-giving for them and for others, that they can con continue to be a, a source of hope and inspiration to those around them. I pray for whatever situations that they are facing, uh, whether they're of heart matters, whether they're financial matters, health matters. Lord, we pause now just to remember that you are here, that you are with us. And we receive the presence of Jesus Christ to minister to those points in our life that need your touch. So if that's healing, we receive it now. If that sense of hope, we receive it now. If it's a sense of, of being lifted above the, the, the haze of, of this COVID thing and to, to move forward with confidence, we pray and we receive that now, Father. We just pray that you would touch each heart and each home. And for the loved ones that are represented here as well, we, we pray the same for them. Touch their lives. May Jesus be exalted. And Lord, we want to pray for our nation. We pray, Father God, as you have instructed us to in 2 Corinthians 7.14, if my people who are called by my name would humble themselves and pray, seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then, then I will hear from heaven. I will forgive their sin and I will heal their land. Lord, we pray that together, believing that you are you are not only doing that, but you will do that to its completeness. And we give you all the glory for every scientific advancement, for every mm -hmm. for every person in the process of healing, with those in the health profession, those frontline people that have been been put themselves in helping people through this, those who encourage others, Father, they have all been part of your plan. So we give you the glory and we pray that those who have done that, who are your followers, would also be doing that in your name and in the power of Jesus Christ. So heal our land, Lord. We still need your healing, not just from this pandemic, but from all the wounds of the division and strife of this last year. We need your healing touch. Come, Lord Jesus. Bring the 
good news of the gospel of salvation in Jesus Christ to each one that you have created. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Well, it was good praying with you guys and good having you here. Thank you for joining us. And we look forward to seeing you next week uh, at this time. And be sure to catch out our other content from Sandy Grove and, uh, and Pastor Steve. Uh, our content and Sandy's is available on our church website, and, the, and all three of them are available on our City View 55 Plus page. So thanks again for joining Love us. Love you guys. Love See you. you. Have Bye. a good weekend.